Well, hello there, friends. Amazing pasta today. A pomodoro and a bolognese together to create this most amazing pasta. We're gonna saute some sausage and we're gonna add some tomatoes and fresh tomatoes and we're gonna make it with a bucatini pasta. Oh, fantastic. Friends, remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're gonna make what is gonna become your favorite pasta dish. Okay, friends, I'm telling you, this is really, 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 without a shadow of a doubt, my favorite pasta sauce. And when I make it, I make a lot of it because you can freeze it. You see, look, I keep them in a 32-ounce container like this. It stays in the freezer 17 years. Oh, maybe, you know, I'm not sure I really can count them. But I promise you, friends, you are going to make this in a big quantity. Don't go out there making a little batch. Make a big batch. It lasts for a long time, I promise you. You know what? Um, let me start talking in a minute. Let me just start cooking. I got right here my, uh, my uh, uh, stub pot. This is in eight quarts. So I got a big pot because um, you need a big pot. You just need a big pot. So I got... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the onion that I sauteing dice small, this is, uh, uh, it ended up being almost three cups of onion. It's just, you know, I use the big onion. You know, I use those big one right there. Look how big they are. And they're organic onion, they, they, they're fantastic. And, um, and I use uh, two of those, big one. That gave me about three cups of onion. I'm gonna saute them because remember, for a new subscriber, by the way, welcome to so many subscribers every video. I like to welcome the new subscriber that it may not have been here before. We, whenever you got uh, onion, carrots, and celery, you don't put them at the same time, okay, friends? The onion is always number first. So you gotta remember, because if you don't, you're gonna put them together, and you're not gonna caramelize the onion. All right, so, now that this is going, I'm, um, I'm just gonna relax for a second, for a second. I can't relax too long because there's work to do. <laughs> and um, so, this, I'm telling you, this is my favorite sauce of all time. Favorite tomato meat sauce, that is, eh? So, you can make it with beef, you can make it with, uh, with whatever you want. I like to make it with sausage. So, I make it with a spicy Italian sausage. I got it right here, friends. And that also requires some caramelization. So, right here, my friends, I got a two and a half pound of spicy Italian sausage. Now, this is my preference. This is kind of like my bolognese, okay? It's my bolognese and my pomodoro sauce together. I had another epiphany the other day. I said, I'm gonna make those two together. But this one, I promise you, friends, when you make, Make sure you make a lot because it's, it's not that much more work, okay? Okay, so you dice a couple of more tomato, I mean, uh, carrots, you chop a little more celery, you chop a little more onion, but that's not that big of a deal, okay? Yeah, really, I mean, it's prep, yeah, okay, I agree, it's prep, but do a little bit more at a time, it's not that big of a deal, you know? It's uh, highly recommend you turn the heat on high, it works better. Sometimes I wonder about it. I promise you I didn't drink anything yet, so. So we're gonna saute this, you see? We didn't get some caramelization at all yet. <laughs> Nothing. This one is a spicy Italian sausage. That means it's spicy enough. That means I'm gonna, no salt and pepper on this guy, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a little salt on my onion, cause that's gonna help draw out some of the moisture. And we gotta have the, um, the caramelization of the onion. So like I said before, let's take this out of the way. We wait, and then we're gonna put celery. This celery, that was about four or five big stock thing, branches of celery that I cut little, in little dice. You gotta cut them in little dice, otherwise they don't cook. Cause that sauce gonna cook for about an hour and a half. You know, maybe an hour. Depends, it's all about the tomatoes. If the tomatoes are nice and sweet, boom, you're good to go. Sausage is going to be beautiful caramelized by the time I'm done, right? So, 
uh, uh, so, uh, uh, carrots, carrot, celery. I got tomato puree because we're gonna need some consistency. And I got a little cherry tomatoes. Sometimes they're nice and sweet, they're delicious. And, um, and we're gonna use those. And, uh, and uh, believe it or not, the cherry tomatoes, they have a little skin that really release a lot of pectin. And the pectin is gonna help a sauce. So if you can get them, great. Peel peanut mushroom, I know you can't get those, but <laughs> I got a next door neighbor that brings me those mushrooms. And, uh, and, um, and, and, and I cut a corner, any mushroom, friends. A, a white portobello, a portobello mushroom, a regular mushroom, chanterelle mushroom, whatever mushroom you can find, my friends. Now, the piopino mushroom, perfect, because you're making an Italian sauce, Italian mushroom, eh? Um, the stem is not bad, if you can actually eat it, but I don't want to cook it at the same time. You see, friends, because the stems, it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook than this beautiful cup. So what I do is I cut them, you see, look, cut them in quarters if they're big, otherwise if they're small, I leave them alone. All right, and those we're gonna put them toward the end. We're not gonna put at the beginning because if I cook them for an hour and a half, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna disintegrate. They're not gonna even gonna be there, right? So let's look at the sausage, friends. Well, sausage got a long way to go, but let me tell you, you can, like I say, you can make it with beef, you can make it with sausage, you can make it with whatever you want, pork, anything you want, my friends. But the secret is to caramelize it. See right here, we got a long way to go. But you see, if you can see right here, I don't know if Jack can get a close up here. There's only one little piece right here, then got some caramelization. Okay, okay, a little bit. See right there? Okay, this is what we're looking for here, friends. Right there, right there, right there. See right there? Right there. Okay? So we got a long, long way to go before we get some caramelization. Mushroom we're gonna put later. The stem we're gonna put in the same time because they need to, they, they're good, you can eat them. Sometimes you can't eat the stem of the mushroom. How cool is that? Huh? My, uh, my uh, next door neighbor, Gary, brings them to me. And he said, you can eat the whole stem. He's right, we can eat them. Uh, but they cook a little, they're gonna take a little longer to cook. So. Than the, than the thing. And basil, we're gonna put fresh basil, right? Eh? Right there, my friends. You go to the store, you know it's cheaper to buy the whole plant, I find. You know, in Fort Lauderdale, you buy those little containers, they die in no time at all. At least this, you can go back and put it in the garden. And if you take care of it, you can have basil, fresh basil. Uh, we're gonna continue sauteing that. The onions are getting nice and golden brown. You see, friends? Okay? Now you can, you know they're sweet. You see, if you put the carrots and the celery at the same time, you'll never get that. So that means, and this is for all the new subscribers, my regular, my regular subscribers that have been with us for a couple of years, they know. And they're like, oh, mama me, he goes again, repeating himself. But it's really important because you see, the onion are now sweet. If, if you're gonna stew them, you're gonna miss the caramelization. So, celery. Then we're gonna put the, uh, the carrots. We're gonna saute this for a little while. The mirepoix or the trinity or, you know, the, everybody calls it a different way. We're gonna call it the celery, carrots, and onion. And then we're gonna put the tomato in there. We're gonna give those a little, little cooking time. Gonna keep an eye on a sausage. All right? So here, here's what's gonna happen, my friends. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna continue sauteing this. Get this beautiful golden brown. Okay, it's gonna take me a little while. I'm gonna continue sauteing this. And then we'll be back in a minute. We're gonna put the tomatoes and the basil and everything else we need to put in. Okay, so I'll see you in a couple of minutes, my friends. So before, I wanna make sure you understand, friends, you need to break this up. See, you break them up. I break them up with a, um, a silicon spatula, you can do it with a, a whatever you have. Silicon spatula, then it's actually sharp, and I can cut it all up. You see, it's very important to create the, um, I always forget the name of it. But you know, the, the, the um, I don't know what you call it. The different shapes, you know. <laughs> I always forget the name of it. Crook and nanny, and nanny and crook, or whatever. I don't know what it's called. It's a, it's a word that somehow I can never remember, but it's the clear shape. You see sometimes you go to a restaurant and you have a, a meat sauce like that, 
and they use the machine or a knife to cut it. You don't ever want to do that. You want the shape, friend. It's all in the mouth. Remember, it's all about the tongue. You don't want to have like baby food, okay? It's, you're not making baby food the way you want it to be smooth. You're quite the contrary. You want the space. You want the, the shape of it, all right? All right, so I'll be back in a minute when this is done, okay, friends? All right, well, sausage are still doing their thing. So now we're going to put the uh, 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 garlic. Remember, you put the garlic only when you're ready to put something wet on top of it so you don't burn it. Okay? Like you see a lot of people put garlic at the beginning. Mamma mia. Well, maybe they like to burn garlic. Some people like it, you know. I had an uncle, the, the brother of my mom. He loved burned garlic. My mom was like, oh, it's no good. Anyway, here it is. Um, two tablespoons and a half and three quarter, whatever, of garlic. And the second, chopped garlic. And the second you smell it, second you smell it, okay, it's gonna happen. The second you smell it, which is about now, yeah, you gotta smell it, you gotta go in there. Oh yeah, you don't have to go in there now. You put your tomatoes. This is two cans of La Valle tomatoes, peeled tomatoes, and I squish them. Squeeze them with my fingers. Two cans of 28 ounces. All right? Then we're gonna put this uh, cherry tomatoes, if you got them. Those are Three of the little containers, you know, I think it's about eight ounces you get them at the store. Three of them, I cut them in half. I cut them in half. Like I said, it's a lot of quantity, but you don't have to make a big quantity like that. But if you have a freezer, <laughs> I highly, highly recommend it. Fresh thyme. And one 28 ounce of tomato puree. Otherwise, we're going to be too liquid. All right, friends. We're getting there. And now, it'll be a miracle if I don't get any of that tomato sauce on top of me. <laughs> when you come back, you're going to see tomato sauce all over. We're going to put the, tomato, the mushroom stems now. You're probably not going to have any Piopino mushrooms. But if you do have them, then do the same thing. Otherwise, just... If you use regular mushroom, you, you don't have that issue. Friends, I gotta wait a little bit longer. I don't have any more, any enough color in my crook and nanny. Did I say it right this time? Oh, it's the nanny and crook again? <laughs> oh, my <boy>. it can... <laughs> uh, Whatever it is, okay? And my sausage. <laughs> oh, the basil, friends, basil. Let me, uh, let me go to show you about the basil, eh? What I like to do about the basil is um, I like to take the leaves, right? Just like this. Right? And just roughly chop it. Roughly chop it. We'll put some more at the end. And the reason why I, I put some more at the end is because at the end I'll have the fresh basil and here I'm gonna have the cooked basil. Two different flavors of basil. Same herbs, two different flavors. Completely different, my friend. I promise you, completely, completely, completely different. All right, we're gonna continue cooking this. As soon as the sausage is beautiful golden brown, as soon as the sausage is beautiful golden brown, we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna bring the whole thing to boil. And as soon as it's boiling, we're gonna reduce it down, and we're gonna cook it very slowly. Bloop, 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 bloop. No, no high ball. You bring it to boil, but then you reduce it down. Top, don't ever put a top on it. Let the acidity of the tomato. The, the acidity of the tomato is mostly in the water. Let the acidity of the water escape, okay? And you'll see, you may not need to add a, a sugar in your tomato sauce at the end or some kind of sweet, okay? Because if you do, 
uh, that it's okay, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, if your tomato are acid, you gotta do something. And the best way to offset acidity of a tomato is to put something sweet in it. Or, or, fat. <laughs> nothing wrong with adding a little fat in your tomato sauce, okay? My mom used to put some olive oil. I kinda like to put butter in mine, but, you know. Uh, huh. Nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> All right, friends, this is almost ready. You see? If you look at the, whatever you call those things, look, look at beautiful, right there. Jack, put the camera right there. See right there how beautiful that is? This is what we're looking for, my friends. Right there, all right? So we're almost there. It's, it's looking beautiful. As soon as we're done, we're gonna put this in there, bring it to boil, cook it slowly, and I'll be back in about an hour and a half. We're gonna saute the mushroom really quick, the head of the mushrooms. We're gonna put some more fresh basil, and I'm gonna serve them I'm gonna serve them with my favorite, my favorite pasta, period for this. Remember, this is my favorite sauce. I gotta serve with my favorite pasta, Bugatini's. Bugatini is a, 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 a big spaghetti, like a spaghettoni, spaghettoni, but with a hole in it. Serve it with whatever you want, but I promise you, this is amazing. Look, 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 look at the meat, friends. See right there? That's it, it's happening. All right, we're gonna put everything in there. All right, and I come back. The bogatina, we're gonna finish, we're gonna serve it in there. It's an amazing recipe, friends. Also, Parmigiano Reggiano. All right, I'll be back in a minute when it's all done. Not in a minute, it's gonna take a while to cook. See you. Okay, friends, the smell in here. Oh, let me tell you, if you could be here right now, you wouldn't believe it. Hey, first thing I'm gonna do, friends, I'm gonna cook the. Uh, the, the head of the um, uh, Piopino mushroom. Uh, if you had a regular mushroom, you put them in there, you wouldn't have this issue that I got right there. Okay, I'm just gonna saute them really quick. They don't take that long, really. Put a little salt and pepper in there. And um, let me get it right there. And uh, they're gonna take just a couple of minutes because they're very thin and, they, and they're, del they're delicate. They're not gonna take a long, very long at all to do it, so I put it right there. So, um, in the sauce, friends, we're gonna put the, remember I was telling you the basil, we put the basil at the beginning, and now we're gonna put the basil at the end. And what I do is I, uh, I take the, the leaf of the basil, the biggest one I put in the bottom, and I put the one on top, and it's called chiffonade, chiffonade. That's come from the word chiffon. Chiffon in French means a rag. <laughs> so you do it very tight like a cigar, you see? You can smoke a <laughs> Don't do it. And then you take your knife right there and you cut it super, super thin. Like you almost don't move your fingers. <laughs> you better not move them too much because if you move them, you know what happened, right? And then whatever little stems you had left in the leaf, you can keep them over there, okay? Like not even there. How about in the garbage, yeah? Hey, you, what's going on over there? All right, so you saute the mushroom. I'm gonna take no time at all, friends. We still want to have a little texture, so now you take that chiffonade and you give it a counter cut. Counter cut. I just made that up. Uh, there's no such a thing as a counter cut. Uh, boom. That I know that exists. Clean this up. Boom. Mushrooms. Done. Boom. We're going to put all this in. We're going to mix all this up. And then we're gonna take the pot right there, turn this up, there's too many heat going on over there, and let me explain. Let's put the mushrooms in there. And the, and the, and the um, now you, if you have a, a chanterelle mushrooms, uh, you can certainly do the same thing at the end. A delicate mushroom, that's it, you know, a delicate mushroom. If you have a baby portobello or regular mushroom, ah, you don't need to bother with them. But look, see, they're gonna be, look, look at the sauce. Look at the sauce, friends. Look how beautiful that is. Look at this. And it smells, I'm telling you, amazing. I don't know if we can see it right there. Can we see it right there? Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's like, it's amazing, the smell in here, my friend. All right, so now we're gonna do, first I'm gonna clean my cutting board because it drives me nuts. I know I'm not using it right now. You're gonna say, what's the big deal? You're not using it right now. I know, I know, I know, I'm not. But I'm looking at it. And, I, and if I look at it, and it's dirty, 
<laughs> I keep catching it. See, I gotta have it clean. This is the thing that I have. I have to have a clean kitchen. What can I tell you? And I, you know, some people said, oh, you'll get over it. No, I don't think so. I think it gets worse as I'm getting older. I want it even cleaner. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do like we do in a restaurant. And I do the same at home, friends, okay? The pasta are pre-cooked, okay? Like the, those, uh, those pasta, friends, are like a big spaghetti, like a spaghettoni. Uh, they take a good uh, nine minutes, 10 minutes, okay? And uh, so what I do is I pre-cook them like seven, eight minutes, right? And then I put them in a, in a, a in a, um, uh, I got my hot water right there, so I put them in there. Oh, oh, so I cook them seven, eight minutes, nine minutes, depends the pasta, right? It's almost cooked like 90% of the way. I put a little bit of olive oil on it, and I maintain them right here. And when I'm ready to eat, I take them, put them in my boiling water right there with a the strainer. I take the sauce right there. This is very simple, friends. You see, that's the way I do it at home. That's the way I did it in a restaurant. Restaurant, we got different uh, compartment. And, and, and it's like a deep fryer, except it's water, salted water, and you put the pasta in there. Very simple. You take the sauce right there, and you put it, you put it in there, but the pasta is a little hot, but don't make it so hot. <laughs> you see, that's what happens when you do li live video. This sauce, let me tell you, friends. You do live video, and uh, you try to have things ready, and then you take your pasta right there, that is already cooked. They cook it to your liking, and you put it right in your sauce, friends. Boom. Boom. Don't put any too much on the side, eh? Try it. It'll be a little... Mix it all up. That's the way I like to do it, okay? Mix it all up. Now I got the pasta cooked. I got the sauce down. Mix it all up. Take a plate. Take a ladle. Hey. Stop the cooking, eh? The pastas are hot, the sauce is boiling hot, what do you want? Right? Take it right there, put it in a ladle, turn it around. Good luck, Jean-Pierre. Normally you should take a pasta fork to do that. I'm trying to be a little elegant. <laughs> yeah, mm hmm Put it right in there. Right there, my friend. Let's take a little more sauce, eh? What do you think? Just a little bit more, because it's so beautiful. Take a little more sauce right there, friends. Not finish. The basil. Come over here, you. Take a little bit of cheese. I have uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, Pecorino Romano. Right there, a little more salty. The basil right there. And then, my friends, let me clean up my plate. Let me clean up my plate. And you know what I like to do? At the last minute, I take a little bit of uh, basil olive oil or roasted garlic olive oil, just a little bit. I just give it a little drizzle, just like this. And this, my friend, oh, mamma mia. And this, my friend, is what I call my favorite pasta. And now I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> you think I do all this just for you guys? I do, but I don't mind sharing. I know one of them then is like ready to go. <laughs> and this is it, my friend. It looks beautiful. And I, I, I haven't made a stain yet on my jacket, which is a miracle. Mmm. 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 Friends, it's amazing. I hope you make it. I hope it becomes your favorite pasta. Remember, Thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to share that channel with everybody, friends. We love you. And don't forget, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Oh, I got my clothes screwed up. They are so good. They are so delicious. How do we do? That was really good. That was good? Mm-hmm.